Hey guys and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday. Presence detection for smart homes is a really important component that can help take your automations to the next level. The more basic presence detectors can help you by having things such as lights turn on after you leave or by having the heating turn on after you come home. And the more powerful methods of detection can even help you save money on your power bill by having things switch off after you leave an individual room. In today's video, we will be focusing on the more simple but extremely effective and useful methods of detection that can detect if you are home or not. And we will cover four different methods of detection that everyone should be able to achieve. We're going to cover two network-based trackers, including using Ubiquiti hardware and two GPS or location-based trackers. And these should be able to help cover pretty much every situation, whether you are on Android or iOS. Make sure to stick around to the end and I'll show you how to link uh, the device trackers that we create to your person entity, all done within Home Assistant, of course. All of these methods of detection are going to be based on tracking our mobile phones, since 99% of us probably have our uh, phones with us when we leave our house. So it makes working out if we are home or not pretty simple. So the first method of detection that we're going to start with is the ping sensor. And the ping sensor is a network based presence detection and it uses what's known as an ICMP ping. Many of you will know uh, what a ping is when it comes to uh, network terminology. But for those who don't, basically it's the most rudimentary and basic form of communication between network devices. By sending lit literally a single packet of data to an IP address and seeing if it replies. So in the context of Home Assistant, Home Assistant will continuously try to send a packet of data to the IP address of your phone and seeing if it gets a reply or not. If your phone replies saying, hey, I'm here, then Home Assistant will mark that device as home because it's obviously on the network, the, the same network as Home Assistant. And if it doesn't get a reply, then it will mark it as away. Simple, right? Now this doesn't work reliably on iOS because iOS devices will Will only reply to pings if the device is awake or so I believe. But I'll show you an iOS alternative in the next example. But for Android the ping sensor works very well and seems to be pretty reliable. Head over to your configuration in Home Assistant and then either create a new device tracker section or add it to your existing one. Using ping as the platform simply create a list of hosts that you want to track like so. Notice the name that you type here will be what's shown inside uh, the home assistant entity name. Once done, give your home assistant a restart and then head over to DevTools and States and you should have some new entities under device trackers. Give it a test by disconnecting your phone from the Wi-Fi and the state should change from home to not home. This can take three or four minutes to change state, so just be patient, but I would say that that probably is acceptable for most scenarios. And that's it for the ping sensor for now, although we will link our device to our person at the end of the video. The next one we're going to look at is a router based network detection. Basically, this talks directly to your router to see if a device is connected to your Wi-Fi or not. I would highly suggest using some sort of router based detection rather than relying on the ping sensor. I think this is a far neater and cleaner option. Only use the ping sensor if your router isn't supported. Now, there is a number of supported routers that work, so make sure to check out the Home Assistant integrations list to see if your uh, router is supported but I will show you how to link Home Assistant to a Unify controller, which is an integration that I've been using for a long time now and it works really well. I know a lot of you guys also have Unify stuff as well, so um, we'll, show, we'll go through the Ubiquiti Unify stuff and I'll show you how to link that to your Home Assistant. The first thing you'll want to do is head into your cloud key and we need to create a user account for Home Assistant so that it has permission to log in and get access to the data it needs. Now, depending on which of the many new Unify user interfaces that you have, the steps may be a little different to what you're seeing. But basically you need to head into the user account section of your Unify controller and then add a new network administrator. If you're using a standalone Unify controller, then make sure to do a manually configured administrator. And if you're using Unify OS on a cloud key, then you need to make sure that this is a local user account. Do not choose a cloud user account. 
For permission types, if you just want to do presence detection, then all you need to do is read only access. However, if you want to be able to do things like control PoE ports and disable internet access, then you will need to add administrator privileges so that the user account has permission to make those changes. Take a note of your username and password and then head over into Home Assistant and then Integrations and search for the Unify integration. Then add the IP address or host name of your Unify controller, enter the username of the account that you just created and the password and change the port if you need to and hit the next button. Select your site location and hit next and then finish. Now by default there is going to be a lot of devices pulled through which is fine if you want to track them all but if you want to reduce that a little bit then you can go go ahead and hit the configure button and then select some of the options in order to reduce the amount of devices. For example, only tracking certain SSIDs if you have multiple or not tracking wired clients. You may also want to set the time a client is gone before it's considered away down a little bit. I typically set this as low as possible for my environment, even just 10 seconds because Unify itself has a couple of minutes of delay. Once done, you can then double check your phone is showing up under DevTools and States as a device tracker. And in the attributes column, it should have the source type as router. Again, we're gonna link this device to our person at the very end, so make sure to stick around for that. Now let's take a look at a location or GPS-based tracker. And the nice thing about location-based trackers is that they give you much more than just a home or a not home status. They can give you the exact locations, meaning that you can have different automations run when you enter or leave different zones that you define. The other cool thing is that location trackers will show up inside of the map feature in Home Assistant. I'm kind of gonna cheat here and suggest using the default Home Assistant location tracker built into the native Home Assistant app. Because I use Android, it works very well and pretty much flawlessly for me. And that's the one I personally use for location tracking for my phone. However, iOS doesn't seem to be the most reliable because it will only update the location if you open the app. And if you're anything like my girlfriend, she never opens the app anymore. So I can't rely on that for her phone. But I'll show you an iOS specific one in the next example. Now, if you have the Home Assistant app already set up and configured, which I'll assume everyone already does, then chances are you already have, or you're already tracking your location, sorry. A couple of things you may want to verify are inside of the Home Assistant app. Head over to app configuration and then manage sensors. Then under the location section, you should have three sensors, background location, location zone, and single accurate location. You'll need to make sure to have at least a background location on and enabled. And if you're using zones, then you'll probably want to enable location zone also. Once you confirm that you have that on, then once again, you can head over into dev tools and states and you should see an entity available for your device tracker. You can confirm this by checking the source type in the attributes column and it should say GPS. Finally, let's take a look at the location tracker that's specific to iOS. And in my opinion, the one that actually makes the most sense to use is the iCloud integration. If you have Apple's Find My feature turned on, then for iOS users, it's a no brainer to use the iCloud integration. And as always, it's super easy to use. Head over to configuration and then integrations, and you'll want to search for the iCloud integrations and add it. This will then prompt you for your iCloud email address and password and then hit the submit button. If you have two-factor authentication enabled on your iCloud, then you will receive a periodic prompt as a home assistant notification asking for your verification code. And this will happen every so often at a time period defined by Apple. Once the integration is added, then you should instantly have access to your device. If you don't see anything or the integration is there, but it doesn't say that it has any devices, then make sure that you have Find My enabled. By opening the Find My app and confirming the setup. It's really easy to do. Once again, head over to DevTools and States and you will have a new device tracker listed for your device. And that's it. Almost. There's one final thing you need to do regardless of which method you're using and that's to link our device to your person entity. Again, it is super easy. Head to configuration, then person and select the person. Then from the drop down, find the device tracker that you added, select it and then press save. What this will do is that anytime your device changes state, it will automatically update the state of your person to say home or away or 
at the gym. It's better to use a person in your automations rather than the individual device itself because if you ever get a new phone then you just need to update it in that one place rather than having to change it in all of your automations. And that is about it. That is four very simple but very effective presence detection methods for use within Home Assistant, no matter if you're using iOS or Android. These four should cover pretty much every scenario. And the cool thing is that you don't need to be limited to using just one method. In fact, I would suggest combining uh, different methods where applicable to find out which one works best. I would suggest having one network-based detection as well as one location-based tracker. That's what I do and that kind of gives you the best flexibility and also coverage. But that's about gonna do it for this video. Obviously there are tons of other different device trackers out there and you can even do individual room device tracking. In fact, I've had a video planned for that and I've had all the hardware bought for that since January. So hopefully we can get around to making that video soon. We also didn't discuss other bits of software or other location-based trackers such as Life360. So if there are any other presence detectors that you want to see, please do let me know in the comments down below which one you want to cover. And of course, we can make a video about that. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So